Well, it may not be all about trade, but it feels like it's all about trade headlines. And then uh, as we get closer to the, to the next Fed meeting, it'll, it'll be all about trade headlines and uh, whatever the Fed remarks are. It's a very mixed market environment. Only 53% of the S&P 500 names are above their 200-day moving average. Only 35% of Russell 2000 names. So large cap is clearly doing you uh, much better than, uh, than small cap is. Um, but the S&P has really been in a range since the beginning of August. Think about all of that volatility that we had, m more headline volatility than actual stock volatility. But 2940-ish seems like resistance. On the Dow, you're looking more like 27200. Um, but these are the levels that people are looking at. And I feel like everyone's opinion will change based on whether or not we stay below them or once we get above them. We see this all the time. It's not a surprise. So if we do have a breakout above those levels, a lot of people who had been saying, yeah, I don't know, I'm not so comfortable here, all of a sudden they'll tell you, I like this, I like that, I'm buying this, I'm buying that. That's just human nature. It's the way the, the, the ball bounces. All right, Pete, what gets us out of, out of this range? Whatever you want to you know, characterize it, range, malaise, well, I, I, direction I, I, we need. Yeah, I think it's a really easy answer. I mean, getting some sort of... Uh, facts about what's going to happen in this trade war. And, can't, and to, can't, to, can't go anywhere without that? I don't think so. I think that's what the market's waiting for is that we're constantly, look at the movement we get each and every day just based upon one headline, with this headline today versus yesterday. Yesterday we're down 280, we're down over 300, 400 points at certain points of the day, and yet we come back today and all of a sudden some little small cracks come in, in terms of Hong Kong. They're still going through some negotiations about plenty more. That does not look like that's over, Scott. And yet we're up 200 points. So that gives you a little bit of an idea. You look at this volatility index, and we talk about it all the time. It was trading up above 2021 yesterday, and then we here it is. We're pulling right back again. I think you've got to play the volatility index as much as anything right now in terms of when do you see these opportunities? And when you get these sell-offs, you look for the opportunities. You look for the quality names, and that's when you, if you, th if you think, if you're convicted enough, that's when I think you can buy. As a matter of fact, yesterday, quite a bit of buying yesterday of various different stocks, just waiting for them to get pushed down. And yesterday was one of those days. All right, Liz, so if we're sort of, you know, our hands are somewhat tied and it comes down to trade, City says, base case, no deal before the 2020 election. So, you know, guide us through what happens between now and uh, the at least the end of the year with the market, if that view is correct. In response to that view, I think we get a lightweight deal at best before the election. I think we do probably need one. Our administration needs one by summer of next year to stay in. Presidents don't typically get reelected during a recession. So we'll do whatever we can to avoid that. But between now and the end of October, at least, we're going to continue to be indecisive. There's way too many uncertainties facing us. The market's going to continue to kind of volley back and forth between up, down, sideways. And I think you just have to kind of stay in it, put your seatbelt on, and enjoy the ride. Yeah, Jenny, City says they're now slightly underweight equities overall. You know, they've cut their overweight in the U.S. down just because of all of the things that Liz was talking about. The rest of the desk talks about trade, fear of recession, just too much risk on the table. Yeah. I think, cutting, I think cutting the equity exposure is a mistake because there's just a lack of alternatives and you really can't find a better place to get the returns that people need for their retirement other than equities. Bonds, bonds are just a wasteland right now in terms of, in terms of um, yield. But I think... You can still be in equities and reduce your exposure though, right? Yeah. Or you're not saying you're not but suggesting saying, so be all in, in, are you? Are you going to sit in cash? Are you going to sit in bonds? You know, I, I don't know. I are say, you suggesting then be all in equities? You know me. I'm always long, right? So I'd say stay in all equities, assuming that you have a long time horizon. And I kind of look at it like this. You've got a lot of companies with good earnings, right? They're not as good as they were, but they're strong. You've got a strong economy. And they're all fighting under this wet blanket of trade that's staying on top of it. But they're fighting and they're pushing it up slowly. You know, that's why we're up 18% on the year. That's pretty significant to be up as much as we are with the overhang of trade.